G'day folks, happy new year to you. Welcome to the very first episode of Learn to Paint TV for 2020. My name's Rod Moore, I'm the founder of Learn to Paint Academy, and I'm excited to present this first episode for the new year for you. So I thought we'd start off with something, uh, a simple little project, one where we can go back and just recount the basics of good painting. And we'll start off with a basic little landscape painting in this episode today. So I've drawn out a little sketch and uh, as you can see, it's a really simple little uh, sketch. I've got a main tree as the sort of focal point. Um, and we've got a, a passage of dark and a passage of light on that tree and it's casting a shadow. And then we've got a smaller tree, similar sort of tree, but it's just set back in the distance. And then we've got a row of trees right along the back there um, in, when that foreground mountain's there. And a little S bend in the path and a few little clouds in the sky. Now, the reason why I've, decided to do something really simple like this is to get back to basics. It's the start of a new year, um, you know, dust the cobwebs off and uh, get our painting muscles working again. It's always a good idea to go back to basics and, and look at the basic fundamentals of good landscape painting. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. Let's go down to our palette cam. I'll show you what we're going to do. Now I'm going to be using water mixable oil paints. Now it doesn't matter if you use uh, regular oil paints or acrylics or water mixable oils we're going to paint in exactly the same process so you'll be able to follow along um, regardless of what medium you're using okay it's the same process so my basic palette is the ultramarine blue or french ultramarine blue my permanent alizarin crimson or permanent crimson or alizarin crimson different names depending on the brand got my yellow ochre so they're my three basic primary colors that i use for landscape painting now the booster colors, we've got our cadmium yellow light, our phthalo green for a bit of that um, green in the tree there, and our titanium white, a really simple palette. And uh, that's gonna simplify it right down. And I'm also gonna keep it simple. I'm using flat brushes with a hog hair uh, bristle, okay? And I've got three large, or four larger ones. The reason why I have four larger ones is because it saves me having to wash them halfway through. Okay, so I'll use one for the sky, one for the darks, etc. So that's the first type of brush that we're going to use. Then we're going to use a smaller flat brush, hog hair bristle brush. Right? So that's the second type of brush that we're going to use. And then a script liner brush for a couple of little details, dots and dashes at the end. Three basic brushes, three basic colours with our primary colours there. And of course the more method of painting is three basic steps. So we're going to do this painting very simple using the more method of painting. It's three steps, three colors, and three brushes. And the idea is to simplify it right down. Too many beginners overcomplicate the whole painting process. So we're going to simplify it down into three steps. Right? First step is going to be our drawing. Second step is going to be our blocking to establish our values pattern. And then our third step is all about refinement of the, uh, of the shapes and then the highlights and details. So a really simple process. We've taught this to more than 30,000 students around the world. And so many of them have had great response and a great result because of the fact that we simplify it right down. Okay, so let's get underway with step one of the more method of painting, which is our drawing step. Okay, so we're gonna do our drawing step. I've got a 12 by 16 inch canvas here. Um, just a basic canvas. This is a demo of practice painting, so don't use anything too uh, expensive for this. Uh, and use reasonable quality paints, I think is important. I'm gonna start off with my small flat brush here, and I'm gonna dip it into some thinner, okay? Now, I could use water, so if you're using acrylics, then by all means, use water. Uh, if you're using oils, a little bit of thinner is a good idea. So we'll take, take some of our blue, take some of our red, we'll just mix up a dark, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, there's no right or wrong with this, just a basic little dark is all we want. But the key here is in this early stage of the painting is to get that nice and loose. So I'll pop my container up there so you can see when I dip into it, right? So we just want that to be nice and wet and loose, that um, paint. We don't want it to be thick paint at this stage, okay? So I come up here now, I'm going to uh, sit my main tree around about there on the landscape. So this first step, the drawing step, is really about identifying where are those big shapes, right? What are the big shapes? And putting those big shapes in the right spot on the canvas, okay? And, and 
You don't need to be a great drawer to get started with painting. Um, if you follow the approach that we're teaching the more method of painting, uh, you can get away with just being able to see where the big shapes are and making a few marks to indicate them. Okay. Now, obviously, if you want to go on and become a master artist, then having good drawing skills is uh, probably pretty important. Well, not probably, it is pretty important. Um, but getting started painting, you just need to be able to identify what's the outline of those big shapes. So we've got our main outline here, but I also want to now show uh, a little bit of the light pattern. So what I'm going to do is draw a line through there. This is going to be the light that's coming from up here. Okay. So this is going to be light around here, and then we're going to have shadow here. We'll just do it in basically two tones. And I'm also going to pop in a couple of sky holes through here just to show you a bit of variety in, uh, in this tree. Okay. So pretty simple so far. Um, we'll run out a bit of shadow in there and a little bit on that side as well. Okay, that's our main dominant big shape. It's our center of interest and where, where we would naturally put our detail and our focus. But because we want to do this as a simple uh, painting to illustrate fundamental landscape painting principles, aerial perspective and so on, I'm going to put an almost identical little uh, tree. Okay, um, and let's pop it in the distance or the middle distance a little bit more. Okay, and so we can demonstrate how aerial perspective impacts on these objects. And again, we'll have a little bit of highlight, a light of value over there. But notice the fact that I've got it sitting higher up in the on, on the plane here, and I've made it a smaller overall shape, automatically starts to set up some distance and um, aerial perspective in the painting. You have to remember that we're trying to paint a three-dimensional world here using um, a, a two-dimensional surface that that has its own challenges okay so we'll put an imaginary horizon line through there and then along that horizon line I'm just going to run some distant trees just a little background of trees now they, because these are off in the distance we're not going to see any detail in those okay so the, the the edges the overall shape is going to be less defined they're going to be more rounded those edges and then we'll run in a mountain ridge in through here, right down there, and we'll run it across there and then maybe up there like so. So this is going to be a really simple little composition. As I said, I want to start off our first episode of this year um, with just something really basic. So it doesn't matter if you've eaten too much Christmas pud and you've forgotten everything about painting that you once knew, right? <laughs> then that's fine. We'll, um, we'll find our feet in this one and then get into some more challenging uh, projects next. So a little bit of an S-bend in our path there, okay, and um, classic sort of composition with the S-bend there in the path. However, I really want this to be our dominant shape is this tree here. So that's our drawing. We perhaps might put in a couple of clouds. Um, I've got them in the sketch there, so let's just run in a couple of little basic clouds in here. I don't want to get too cloud centric in this one. Um, maybe we'll make that a bit slightly bigger cloud there and perhaps a little bit of cloud over there just a hint of the clouds they're going to sit right in the background there we're not going to let them play too big a part but this is an important composition because it's going to enable us to um, you know show a gradient in the field so we get a, a sense of distance in the field we're going to be able to establish a values pattern we've got three rows of trees we've got our main dominant tree secondary tree background row of trees so we can set up a real value structure with those trees and shadows and highlights and uh, we've got different planes now now I just want to spend a moment and talk about how light moves through a landscape there's basically in a landscape there are three different planes that you need to worry about you've got your verticals which stand upright you've got flat planes like the field and then you've got planes on a slant like mountains hills ridges and so on so everything in a landscape is going to be one of those right it's going to either be a flat plane like the back of a cow is going to be a flat plane but the side of a cow is going to be a vertical plane and depending on what type of plane it is will determine how light affects it okay so usually as a general rule of thumb flat planes are your lightest things in a painting actually the lightest thing is usually the sky it's the source of the light 
okay? So you gotta keep that in mind. I see way too many beginners paint their sky too dark and then they're struggling to set up their values throughout the painting because they start with the sky, right? Go too dark and then they can't really establish a values pattern. So the sky is the source of the light. It should therefore be generally the lightest mass or the lightest shape in the painting. Then any of the flat planes, the path and this field, they're going to have direct light on them. So they're going to be the lightest uh, after the sky, right? The vertical planes are going to be the darkest shapes in a painting, okay? Depending on where they are, obviously value is going to drop back. Uh, it's going to get lighter as it goes further back. And then anything on a slope is going to be somewhere between flat planes and vertical planes. And so the light's going to affect them differently. And I want you to keep that in mind um, as we progress through this painting here today. So that's step one of the more method of painting. That's all about getting the drawing right, understanding where these big shapes are going to sit within our painting. Let's now do step two. Step two is our blocking. So in step two, my objective here is to uh, to block in our main shapes here, okay? So we've got this main tree, second tree, third row of trees, there's three different shapes there. Mountain range is the fourth one, then the field and the path is the fifth one, and then the sky would be the sixth. So what we're gonna do is in blocking in is to establish our values, right? Darkness to lightness. And if you're not sure what values are and what, why they're important, I recommend doing our course on uh, color mixing course. So let me mix up a dark, okay? So we're gonna use our blue, gonna use our permanent laser and crimson. And this time, just for something different, uh, I'm gonna use some of this phthalo green. Phthalo green's a very strong color, so it's gonna give us a nice juicy dark there. Now, I wanna keep this paint fairly thin. I don't want to have thick paint up there at this early stage. So I'm gonna use a bit of thinner. If you're using acrylics, a little touch of water so that it's nice, the paint's nice and loose has to feel a little bit like ink, right? And then I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna block in, and the very name block in suggests we're gonna end up with blocky shapes, okay? So if you end up with blocky shapes, I had somebody recently comment in the Learn to Paint Academy that when they do their blocking, it looks all very blocky. And they were worried about that. And I wrote back and I said, that's perfect. It means you're doing your blocking correctly, right? Because this is not the time where we wanna finesse edges. We're just really here to get the masses in, the big shapes in. And it is gonna look a bit blocky, okay? What we don't want is a rounded ball on a couple of sticks there. So keep that in mind. So now with that, I'm just going to lighten that off ever so slightly with a tiny pinhead of white, okay? And I'll add just a touch of the blue into that, cool it back a bit. Not too much though. And maybe a little touch of the red, that's too much blue. And I'm just going to use that then to just run in um, a bit of shadow in there. Just slightly lighter. I made it slightly cooler. And we'll just put in a, a shape there. We can reshape that as we go, uh, as we put the field colors in, no problem at all. So now, we're gonna come in, we're gonna do exactly the same on this tree here, but we can't have it the same color, the same value, and the same temperature. We need to go just a touch cooler. So, a little bit more blue, less green, and a little bit of red in there, but now we need a good amount of white in there. Now you see that when I mix it up? That's way too blue, right? We don't want that blue. So a bit more green into that. And a little bit more red. And we should notice when we put it up there, it's, it's always hard to tell when, I mean, that's my first mix there. This is my next mix. But it is always a little bit hard to tell when we're mixing on the palette. So we always need to do a little bit of a test um, before we commit ourselves. So I think that's getting there. Let me just get a little touch more white into that. Yeah, that's looking better, I think. Now, more th more thinner or water if you're using acrylics. Huh? Um, let's just test that. And we should look at that and go, nah, it's not quite light enough, I don't feel, or cool enough. So I'll get a little bit more white, 
a little bit more blue. Let's just test that and that's looking better I'm happier with that so we'll just mass that in now and again I just want to reiterate there should be a noticeable difference here between the two and you know looking at that I'd say yep yeah, there is so we can work with that we know we've got a, a values pattern starting to uh, emerge here a little bit of shadow in a similar you know dark tone there and then we come back to this row of trees through here and that needs to be a little bit grayer than what I've got so I'm going to put in a little bit more of the red okay I'm going to put a little touch of the yellow ochre that'll help gray it back okay the reason why it needs to be gray back is the laws of aerial perspective tell us that the paint becomes less saturated the further back into the distance it goes it grays off in other words the colors become more muted okay so by mixing more of the third primary in there we will achieve a more muted um, color okay so that's a gray tone that we want a little bit more white in there okay now again this should be a, a noticeable jump from this tone here to here so the logical place to put that it to test is just next to it right and it's a subtle but it's noticeable enough so I'll just run with that okay and try and make a bit of an interesting um, shape through there so it's fairly gray by comparison with the other two tree areas that we put in there it's a bluey gray which is what we want okay run that through there maybe make a slightly taller one or two there don't make them all the same shape but at the same time don't let any of them become the stars of the show right that won't be good you you want this tree here to be the star of our show okay do those little row of trees through there now our next logical point to work is with this background mountain here okay we want to get that in and get the right value for that and make it interesting we're not going to detail it up much but we want to have a little bit of interest there so i'll just go back to my medium size flat brush Okay. we'll get some of this white there's going to be a fair bit of white in there we'll get some of this ultramarine blue a little touch of the alizarin a little touch of the yellow ochre let's mix that and you can see the red's a little bit dominant there which is not what we want warm colors come forward cool colors recede that's going to come forward too much okay so it's a bluey gray is what we're looking for add a little bit more thinner let's just test that okay is that light enough in value probably could go a touch lighter now as i'm testing against that row of trees that row of trees needs to just pop out a little bit from this background tone here might go a little touch bluer i think cool it down a bit there we go that looks better okay let's just test that yeah i'm happier with that it's possibly a touch dark but uh, I can make the trees pop out with the highlights so um, but it's certainly if you look at it against this our darkest dark in this main tree it's working right and even against our secondary tree here we have got enough variation in the values to start creating a sense of depth and um, a sense of goodness in the painting aerial perspective oh, sorry landscape painting is all about uh, controlling the what's the word giving the illusion of depth right but you have to keep in mind we're painting on a two-dimensional surface and um, we're trying to create a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional and that, that's the thing that made me fall in love with painting actually I'll never forget the day I was uh, struggling away with watercolors before I started oil painting 
and I was watching a Robert Wade DVD. I mean, Robert Wade's a, one of the great watercolour artists of all time, Australian artist. And I had a number of his DVDs back in the early days. And I watched him doing this building and he put this shadow tone in and all of a sudden the painting came to life and um, became three dimensional. It just blew me away that you could create that sense of three dimension in what is effectively um, a two dimensional space. And, and that got me hooked on painting, you know, just trying to capture that sense of realism in what we do. And I've came to learn as a result of that, that there are certain techniques that apply that enable that to be possible. The rules of aerial perspective, which is what we teach here at the Moore, or the Learn to Paint Academy with the Moore Method of Painting. Okay, so we've got a nice little tone there on that background mountain. I'm happy with that. Now we could just about use this tone. I might darken it ever so slightly, a little bit more blue, a little bit more red. Okay just about use this as a shadow tone in these clouds. Let's just pop a little bit of that up there. I've gone slightly darker, but uh, I reckon that's pretty close. Okay, we'll run that one in there. And look, we can tone that back a bit if, if need be. Okay, if need be. So, that leaves us with our field to do, and the path, and the sky, as far as our blocking goes. So, let me grab another brush. So now, the field is gonna be a lot lighter than those darks, so that's why I use another brush. I could, I could clean this brush, here look. I could clean that one, but it's fairly dirty. Rather than waste time right now, I'll just jump down to this brush here. And we'll take a nice big chunk of the white and we'll take some of this yellow ochre, a little bit of the red, okay, and we'll mix that together. Now we're going to use aerial perspective again here with our field. So we're going to start out with our lightest part of the field, okay, and we're going to get progressively darker. So notice the way I'm mixing this. I've got my light over here and I've got my darker tone over there. Um, So that I can compare. I'll touch more of the red in there, but that's pretty good. I'll get some thinner into that. I'll try and clean off the brush. A touch more white. Now I could possibly grey it with a pinhead of the blue into that. Okay, because there's already a bit of blue and a bit, uh, sorry, a bit of yellow and a bit of red into that. It will grey it back a bit. But as long as it's lighter in value, that's probably the most important thing. And I'll just cut in around this shadow. Okay. So the further away, the lighter the value and the grayer, the um, saturation. Okay, so if I pick up a little bit of that dirty tone off that shadow, I don't mind because it actually helps me to, to gray it back in that spot. Okay. See that little bit of that grey sneaking through? Not a problem, don't fuss with that. Okay, again, keep the paint a little bit on the thin side. And look, if you follow what we're talking about here in today's lesson, this episode, you will learn pretty much, I'd take notes because what I'm telling you in this episode are all the rules of aerial perspective. And if you can apply them, learn to apply them, then you'll, you can really create great looking uh, landscape paintings. These are the same rules that you'll find in all the great books um, on landscape painting. I didn't make them up. I studied hours and hours of DVDs, bought every book I could find, took lots and lots of courses. And what I found was it was difficult to get all the information in one spot. So I've been over the years collating this knowledge into one, you know, into our method, into the more method of painting. And we're soon going to release the definitive guide to landscape painting. You know, using everything that we've learnt over the years. Okay. 
I'll just come around this path here. You can, now all this is wet, so just carefully you don't tidy up, dirty up your brush too much. See how I'm getting a little bit of that purpley dark tone. So I'll just keep a bit of paper towel handy just to keep working that out. And now we can come into some of this slightly darker tone here. Okay. And we can start building it up. Now I'm not going to worry about too much detail at this point. I just want to get color down in the right shape, the right value, okay, um, in the right place. That's what our blocking is designed to do. Okay. Picked up some of that dirt there, that's okay. What I want to do is just blur those edges a little bit. We don't really want hard edges there. So now let's get a little bit warmer, a little bit darker in tone. Something like that, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll just get all this massed in, and I'm, and I'm not going to fuss too much at this stage. The fussing part comes in the third step of the more method of painting, which is of course where we refine what we've blocked in, and um, we add our details and our highlights and all that good stuff in then. Okay. So keep it a little bit random. If you're wanting to paint like the Impressionists, then most of them had a nice, what we call, painterly feel. Um, in other words, they, they weren't painting neat, uh, perfectly rendered uh, paintings, you know, like, not like the Renaissance painters who um, they had these perfectly modelled and rendered objects in their painting you couldn't see any brush marks the, the great thing about the impressionists was that you could see their brush marks and it had this real painterly feel to it you know you could tell that an artist had been busy at work and, uh, and that's what we try and do here at the learn to paint academy is capture that sort of spirit of the impressionists and so we prefer a painterly feel to personal preference obviously um, but yeah, we prefer a painterly feel. Now you can see that there's a gradation from here, the four closest to us where we're standing on the path, into the distance. Dark to light, it's warmer in tone here, it's cooler back there, um, and it's more saturated in paint here, and it's it's grayed off a little bit in the distance there, right? They're all the sort of rules of, of the aerial perspective. Well, not all of the rules, but some of the rules, right? So now we can move to the sky, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a gradation. We're going to go from dark to light. So as we move towards the horizon point, we, we turn it off in value. We get lighter towards the horizon point. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, basically. I've got another brush for my sky. Take a chunk of white. If you don't have multiple brushes, then just take a bit of time and get your brushes clean as you can. Okay, take our white. We'll take a chunk of this blue. Pop that there. Notice I've popped it to the side. I don't want to commit to all of that blue just yet. Okay, I want to creep up on it. Okay, and that looks probably dark enough for our darkest part of the sky. Add a pinhead of red into it and a pinhead of the yellow. Okay, and just mix those up. It's probably graded off a bit too much, so let me just. Take some more pure color there, get a bit more white into that. And I'll use that grayer version in a moment. Okay, that's about where we want to be. A little bit of thinner, keep this paint thin, okay. Use a bit of water if you're using uh, acrylics. Actually, if you're using acrylics, the sky is always good to use a bit of retarder in the sky. That'll keep it wet longer. The sky is one of those places where you may need to blend a bit more. Okay, so let's just run that in. That's pretty dark. It's probably not what I want. So let's keep that as our darkest um, part of the painting. Okay, and um, we can lighten it up by introducing a bit of white into that. So let's get some white. We've got that grayer version there which will just work into some of that. Okay. 
Now I'm not going to blend it necessarily, I'll just paint up to what I've already done and uh, work around those big shapes. Now I don't particularly like painting up to the lines, um, but at the same time because that paint's wet and we want to keep our sky a little bit on the pure side, it's a good idea not to uh, get too close. You notice that down in the field here I didn't mind blurring those edges a bit. In the sky it's just a little bit harder because this is our lightest value generally and um, that dark will just muddy it up too much. So for the moment we'll try and keep the tone a little bit pure. I can reshape that hill there a bit. Okay, it's good. Got a couple of sky holes there, which we can just pop in a bit of sky color. Okay, let's push on. more thinner again keep that paint moving around that cloud now this paint is fairly thick I probably should have thinned it down a bit more however sky I do tend to go slightly thicker in the sky simply because I'm probably not going to come back in and work into my sky too much in step three uh, I tend to like to just do one pass of the sky if we can um, so that's why I'm instinctively just painting it a little bit thicker and you know that paint consistency part of painting doesn't matter if you're painting in oils or acrylics it's a feel that you can only develop by doing a number of paintings. It's hard to teach. You'll know when you've got the right feel for it. Just one day it all clicks. And you go, ah, oh, now I get what Rob was always talking about. <laughs> I thought he was just banging on. That's probably true too, but can okay, get in around those shapes. Now, if you ever look at some of these impressionist paintings in the sky, like the Australian Impressionist, Arthur Streeton, um, you know, they, they're big chunky brush marks in the sky. Okay, so now I've got around all those big shapes, I've got a, a bit of a gradient, darkest dark, which we sort of decided was a little bit too dark. Now what I want to do is just clean out this brush. See how all the paint's accumulated there? So I'll just come in here and I'll just pull out some of that paint with the knife. Okay. I don't have to get this perfectly clean for the next step, but a little bit clean would be good. Probably a bit of paper towel. Now notice that the painting at this stage is looking blocky. All right, big blocky shapes. And that's exactly how it should look in the blocking stage. Okay, so I'm just pulling the brush through the paper towel. It's not perfectly clean. It's clean enough what we're going to do now. What we're going to do now is just come up to the, where these intersecting um, tones are. I'm just going to soften them together. Okay. I'm not going to go for a perfect sky. I'm going to go for one that's a little bit moody. Okay. So I'm just going to drag some of that light up into that darker. Pretty simple little sky that we're doing here. There's not much happening in it apart from these few little clouds. Which we'll come back to. Okay, just soften it out. A little bit, not too much. Okay, 
and that look, that's looking good. We've got, you can see there's a definite sense of um, depth happening in here. I'm using dried out grasses because in Australia right now we're in drought and you've probably heard about like bushfires and so, so on, pardon me. Um, so I'm using a very dried out field, not much green. I'll come in and add a little, few little tufts of green um, as we develop the painting and there'll be some greens you know, built into the uh, trees as well. Okay, folks, well, that finishes step two, our blocking, where we establish our values and we start to set up our aerial perspective in this painting. And I think we're on track. This is going to make a nice little sort of Australian burnt sun sort of a landscape that we're doing here. Very simple, very basic. You know, it's a good one to ease us back into the start of a new year and a new decade of painting. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to let this set off a little bit. So if you're using acrylic, this... Uh, break is pretty critical, right? Uh, if you're using acrylic, it's going to be tacky right now, and you don't want it to be tacky, right? So you need, need to let it fully dry off before you do step three. And if you're using oils, we want this just to set up a little bit. In other words, some of that medium will dry out and the paint will become tacky. So in oils, tacky is good. In acrylics, not so good, right? Either way, have an hour break and then we'll come back to it. You know, have a cup of tea, have some lunch. I'm going to have a swim in the pool because it's pretty hot in here. And then we'll pick this up again in about an hour's time. And um, then we'll do our refinement step, step three, where we're going to bring this painting to life. So I'll see you shortly after the break. Okay, welcome back, folks. We're now going to do step number three in the more method of painting, which is um, now starting to pull this painting together. We're going to do our refinement, our details, highlights, and then our finishing touches. So I've left this overnight and um, it's you know settled down quite nicely. There's a bit of work for us to do, so let's get into it and I'll uh, explain to you as we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, uh, is just work on the darks in these trees here. Um, they're probably just a little bit too, you know, this one in particular, chromatic black. I want to push it to a darker green um, and then we'll reduce the values. And this row of trees in the background here is probably, even though values wise it's correct, it's probably just um, a little bit too, uh, too dark along that back line there. So I'll check some of our blue and our yellow ochre, get a bit more of that. And so whilst setting up our values structure, it's good to have that sort of blacker tone it's probably not what we want for this painting here it's probably a little bit too dark overall and really what i want is a darker green for the dark side of those trees so i'm mixing up our ultramarine blue now three base colors basically ultramarine blue a little bit of the yellow ochre to push it to a darker green and uh, to make sure it gets dark enough a little bit of the alizarin crimson okay but probably a touch more of the blue there we go so I'll use a little bit of thinner in that. Now I don't have to paint out all of this area here. Um, in fact, you can see it's very similar value there. So if some of that original dark shines through, that's fine. But I'm just pushing it slightly greener. And I've got a few harder lines, harder edges there. So I'll just break up a few of those as well. Now what makes a tree look like a tree predominantly is the outside shape of it and if the edges aren't right if the shape of it's not right then it's just not going to appear tree like now I've taken a little bit of white see I've got that white there I don't want to put that into that mix I'm going to put it to the side the reason is I want to keep that original mix as my reference okay and I need to go a little bit lighter now and a little bit cooler you know you can see that it's definitely a little bit cooler it's bluer i do need a little pinch of the alizarin in there and a little bit more of the yellow okay so you can see there's a definite difference it's probably just a touch dark so i'll get a little touch more of that white and you can see on the brush there not much white because i want to sneak up to it i don't want to over commit with the white all at once there we go now one other thing, you can see there's a definite difference there, but it may not necessarily look right when you're mixing on the palette. 
you have to always come up here and test so it's about relationships how does this dark tone here now relate to this dark tone here so let's just have a look now you can see I've pretty much even that looked fairly light on the palette here when I put it up here I'm close to the original value aren't I because I'm just following the principles that we talk about which is um, you know making it a little bit cooler make it a little bit lighter you can see I've got a hard edge along the bottom there and that's not good from our blocking so I'll just make some little phology shapes there right and that's a more pleasing tone in there now I think than the darker tone that we had so um, you know that's a nice little adjustment and then we've got this background row of trees and again same theory is going to apply we want to just cool it down a little bit and we're going to lighten it a bit more and the further objects get away from us in the distance the more the um, the more that the dark and the light values seem to come together so this is my original and I think that's too dark overall so I've made it just a little bit lighter it's a little bit greener too which is part of what I was going for I want the darks to be a little bit greener I can leave some of that original dark in there okay and really this is what we're doing here is putting in our mid tones isn't it you know in a way you could look at it that way probably not effectively because I've mixed up the same value but I am keeping some of the original dark there so we're getting three different tones happening in these shapes which will give it more of a, a sense of volume and form okay we can work under that tree there and that, that to me is automatically looking better being a little bit greener it ties in with the field a bit more um, so I'm happy with that so this distant mountain here it's a little bit purple I'll just give that brush a little bit of clean out it's a touch purple oh and by the way what I wanted to say is let me just come down to the palette because I think this is a really important point when you're mixing color you know mix it like I've done with it, especially if we're working at our value structure don't mix it all in one puddle always preserve your puddles so you can see what your values are right and you can see that there's a definite progression in your values um, if I mix it all in just in the one mix there I'm going to lose sight of what my values are and um, it's going to make it hard to remix them because when we come in to do our highlights those values will come back into play okay let's give that brush a slight clean and what I want to do is just now mix up that distant tone so I know it's blue and red and there's a little bit of the yellow ochre in there that little bit of yellow ochre is in there purely just to mute the tone off a bit and I know it's white because it's it's not fully not the tube value right so we know I need those three so we mix those up and then we go okay that's what I've mixed okay let me just come up here and do a little test now you can automatically see that that's too dark right so that means we need a lot more white in there and again when you mix this on the palette you're going to look at it and go that looks too light <laughs> but let's come up here and have a look okay now you can see that's almost the same value it's a little bit cooler which is actually what I wanted to do is just get a little bit more uh, blue into it make it more of a bluey gray rather than that mauvey tone that's there currently so I have a little bit more blue into it now the risk I run is I add more pigment you know of the blue into it the blue is fairly dark is that my value is going to shift you watch this when I put this up here next to so that was my first one too dark that was the one I just added which you can probably barely see because it's around about the same value and then this is with a little bit more blue in it and it's gone dark again right let me just give you a close-up on that so you can see that was the original mix added, added uh, the widen to it so I've matched the value close fairly close um, and then I've added more blue and it's gone dark again a little bit too dark so what do we do if it's a little bit too dark we just add that little bit of white into it not too much and then let's have a look yeah that's pretty good so I just felt that it was a little bit too much red showing through but I'll use some of that red to my advantage so I'm not going to completely block out what we've already done um, we're just going to add a little bit more blue into the equation soften up some of the edges of those trees at the same time ok 
And automatically I feel that that's starting to look better now. Okay. Keep those edges along the top of the mountain fairly undefined. We don't want hard edges in the in the way off in the distance there. Okay. That's, that's, that to me is looking more harmonious now. There's a lot more unity between these trees and that background row of mountains there. Um, so that's working good. Okay. So now let's come to our sky. We're not going to do a lot with the sky, but I'll pop in a little bit of um, cloud, lighter tones of the clouds in here. So we're just going to use white and a bit of yellow ochre. So we'll do another demo where we concentrate more on skies. Uh, but for this one, we'll just keep it simple. I mean, as I said at the start, this is really a project just to get the cobwebs out, start of a new painting year. There we go. That's too yellow, so a little bit more white into that. Yeah, we just want to get ourselves going and re-establish our understanding of um, some of the principles of landscape painting and so on. So that's what we're doing here today, just keeping it really simple. Okay. Pop a few little more wispy clouds into the mix. Now that sky is fairly dry. I've painted it fairly thin, so um, you know, if you need to, you can repaint your sky just so you've got something to work back into, or I'll just get a little bit of thinner on that. We're using acrylics, a little bit of water. But notice also that I, because that's got that little bit of yellow in there, um, we're able to see it against the lighter sky as well. And that's important. You don't want to paint your clouds to the point where they're exactly the same value as a lighter part of the sky and you, uh, you can't see them. Okay, so I don't want to overdo that. So if anything, those darks are a little bit too dark. We'll leave that for now and we'll come back and we'll reassess um, you know, a little bit later. Okay, so now let's take our ultramarine blue, tiny little bit of the phthalo green. Don't have to use it if you don't want, you can just use your yellows. Okay, get our yellow ochre in there and some of our booster cadmium yellow light or lemon yellow. Okay, and we're mixing up a more of a highlight tone, a little bit of white. And I'm going to put a bit of that alizarin crimson in there. So I think your greens always look a bit more authentic with that in there. Okay, push it slightly on the yellow ochre side. Uh, well, primarily because we've got lots of yellow ochre in the painting. Let's just test this as a highlight tone here. Okay, this is the light side of the tree. Remember we said we're just going to just concentrate on getting the dark side and the light side into this tree. Around that sky hole there. So I'm putting down a base color here. Or maybe there's a little bit over there as well. Okay, and then we'll, we'll model it up in a moment. We'll add a little bit more yellow ochre. A little bit more red to part of it. So we just need to get a little bit of variety in there. Soften some of it into the wet paint that we've already got there. The light's coming from over here, so you've got to think, well, where is that going to hit on our main tree? Now get a little bit of the punchier yellow as well, which is our lemon yellow, and just work that into the outer. Okay, so it's starting to shape up. Okay, so now let's do the same with the other one. We'll just add a little bit more white into that mix now. Okay, so it should be lighter than what we've just been doing. And that's quite a nice green there. 
careful I don't repeat the same shapes that I've just established in our main tree that would be you know if it's too much the same that's not going to work I think there's enough variety in there and we'll have a little bit more detail in this uh, main main part of our tree okay so now we come back to the distant ones and again we add a little bit more white and it needs to be bluer and if the yellow starts to drop out okay and this this tone that we're going to put up there has to be closer to the shadow tone there's less contrast okay let's just test that there's less so there's a noticeable difference here right less noticeable difference there between the dark and the light and then as we come back we want even less it's the contrast diminishes here okay that's why on the distant mountains even though we know there are trees there we can't really discern them without strong sunlight and even then we're only we're looking at the canopy okay less effort put into the modeling in the background there less details but you can see that looks like a row of trees yeah maybe we make um we exaggerate a couple of them just to break the line we don't want it all to be the same size and so on and our little painting starting to come together just with a few additions that we've done so far we are looking good all right simple little painting anyone can do just follow along now let's get in a light tone with our alizarin crimson our yellow ochre let's get in a nice well that could be a good foreground tone but let me just get a distant tone we're going to do it the gravel path there and what i'm doing on my palette here is just establishing a values pattern there right <laughs> can you see that um I always like country scenes, landscapes scenes. I like to make it a, a dirt road. Okay, let me just come into this darker tone here. Well, it's warmer as well. And just distinguishes it from the field color. into that mix and you don't need to put details for the path in further away I've got it a little bit dark actually let me get some of that light tone just there is a little bit dark there doesn't need to be any details there but as we come closer to us we can put a few little marks like where the tires of the cars and so on have left it a little bit styrated so look we're very close to a finished painting here it's not it's not finished but it's coming together quite nicely yeah hopefully you can see that um, and how easy is it when you when you follow a particular process now what i'm going to do i'm just going to take some blue and red okay a little touch of white into that let's just get a little bit of white okay and see i've got broken the mix is broken up into different tones i haven't mixed it fully um and i'm just going to come in here and just add, it, add a few additional sort of Just shift that up a little bit it was a bit too black again so then i'll lighten that off and um so we tie back in with the mountains and the cloud shadows there just change that value a little bit all right looking good now i'm going to switch just to get in a little bit of detail work just for the fun of it um so we will We'll utilize this mix here okay. a little bit of dark there 
I'll use my little script liner brush. These are little watercolor ones usually I use in their synthetic hair. Um, so a bit of thinner, or if you're using acrylics, a bit of water so that the paint loosens up a bit. Okay, because we're gonna go over thick paint now. For these little uh, script liner details, we wanna use some, um, you know, some looser paint. So I'm just going to just pop in a couple of tree trunks there. Over the sky hole. That sky hole is a bit round. <laughs> um, we need to fix that. Okay. I'll put a few other little dry bits and pieces there. So that's quite a purple tone. Um, it's going to need a highlight over it to break it up, but I think it works, especially under here. Um, it seems to be working okay. shadow into there okay and often you'll find in especially in Australia I don't know about other places but you'll often find these are dried out twigs sticking out the top of trees and that's because the cockies come by and uh, pull the foliage off so they got somewhere to land <laughs> Cheeky little buggers. Um, quite noisy too, they are. Okay. Same here, less detail and information because we're further away, right? It's a good rule of thumb. But you can see this is darker. I went into a lighter tone here, and it works. It gives you that separation there, yeah? Now, I can take then just the slightest little bit of a highlight. So I'll get some of this light yellow and a little bit of that reddier tone. Okay. So it's kind of an orange, a light orange is what I'm looking for there. And just a little bit along that tree trunk here and there. Okay, don't need much more detail than that in a tree to give it that feeling of being a little bit tree-like. And if you wanted to, you could pop a few You always run the risk of making it look a bit busy out the back there if you do too much of that. All right, coming together. So now what I'm seeing is we need to just get a little bit more interest and in, in work into our uh, grass area there. Remembering that that's the, you know, the, one of the lightest parts of the painting. So we'll take this white here yellow ochre here, get a little bit of the red, pop that there, and then let's just mix up some tones. And I don't want to do too much out the back, we'll do a little bit, but I just want to start to pat in some uh, little bits of grasses and so on. And again, I'm not going to wipe out what we've already done. What we've already done was important. So, um, I've got a bit of dark in the brush I'll have to clean that. Yeah, the objective here is not just to obliterate what's already been painted, um, but to, to utilize what's already there as the underpaint. And um, add a little bit more variety, a little bit more interest in there. Now at the back here, we're not going to see much of what I'm doing. But a little flick of the grass up over the shadow to make that shadow sit into the painting a bit better.
Okay, let me get a little bit darker as we come forward. happening in there. So you can see there's a little bit more interest now happening in the foreground. And again, I want to keep this really simple, so I'm not going to overdo this. I'm just going to pop in a few little bits of grass in there, like so. Um, perhaps we'll put in a little bit of uh, balance that tree out, a little bit of uh, more of an earthier patch in there where there's no grass, it's just some exposed earth there. Barely noticed that, so I'll just put a little touch of the darker tone in there. Just to break up that field. Okay. And look, how much more do you do? Um, what I might do is just, this is our distant mountain tone. Mix in a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. Not too much, I want to keep keep it fairly similar of the same family like that and then go okay well we know that the light's coming from over this direction so we're going to have a little bit of highlight running in this part of the mountain Just a couple of little touches of interest there. But it's very subtle. Very subtle. Okay. One thing that sort of occurred to me is that I need a little bit more yellow, perhaps just a touch of the red. Now I'm just working on the shapes there, right? Um, as well as getting a little bit warmer yellow in there, but get those shapes there over the sky hole a little don't leave your sky hole rounded like that okay i'm happy with the shape of the other one but i'll just what i'll do is i'll just um pop some foliage over a little bit of the branches there so that then they're all sticking out and um don't know that we'll do much more to this one what do you think? I'm fairly happy with it. I'll just take a dry brush and see if I can't soften out some of that cloud. Just soften it back into the blue. Okay, those little cumulus clouds there are working reasonably well. And We'll leave it there. As I said, we wanted to keep this as a really simple little get back started painting for the new year. Really basic concepts. Um, just revisiting, you know, everything we know about landscape painting and um, the, the basics of that. And I think it's good to do a bit of a revisit, refresh, get the cobwebs out after 
Christmas and New Year and whatever else you've got going on in your life and um, this will set us up for a new painting year get a little bit more variety into there Notice I've, I've kept the integrity of our lighter value at the back and then it's getting darker as it comes down here. Darker and warmer, lighter and cooler. So it's important that you do that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm wanting to get in that little bit of variety and uh, interest into the field of grass as well. And um, overall, it's a good little uh, practice landscape painting. We've utilized all the principles. Well, there you go, folks. A great little landscape painting. We've utilized all the basic principles that we teach at the Learner Paint Academy and with the more method of painting. And um, it's been a sim pretty simple process to follow. I'm, I'm sure you uh, have been able to follow along. Remember in step one, we just went to get the big shapes placed correctly on the canvas. Step two was about really blocking in and getting our values right. So we set up our values pattern, especially with any upright planes. So when we're setting up our values uh, in the block in phase step two we have to think about which are our vertical planes so we've got this large tree the second tree background row of trees and the mountains a slanting plane right they're the things that are important to establish our values with first because we know that our flat horizontal plane and our sky are going to be our lightest values um, so make sure you really get the value structure right with any vertical or slanted planes and, and that'll set you up to get everything else right um, and then step three, we, you saw what I did in step three, I adjusted the color, the tone, a little bit of the darks to make them a little bit greener, darker green. And then we added in our lighter highlight colors, right? Whether it's catching the sun. That's basically what we did. We adjusted the background tone and um, our mountains made them slightly bluer and uh, a few little marks for details. But really, you know, you saw me do a few little branches and trunks but not a lot of detail because if you get your values right and your composition right and your shapes right, the details become secondary. I mean, you look at any of the great impressionist artists and there's not a lot of emphasis on details, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. First episode for 2020 of Learn to Paint TV. I've certainly enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go to the Learn to Paint Academy and request our free painting course. I'll put the link underneath me here. Um, we've got a complete course there that goes through the more method of painting in more detail for you and you can learn a little bit more about what we do and there's four different full length painting uh, demonstrations there for you and uh, check out all the past episodes of Learn to Paint TV again the web address is underneath me here I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV happy painting cheers